Tree of Thoughts prompting improves multi-step reasoning. Meta AI scales up speech technology to more than a thousand languages. The Megabyte architecture aims to make transformers more efficient, and a new policy paper proposes that the UK spends £11 billion on the Great British Cloud and Brit GPT. Welcome to AI News with Samuel Albany. Princeton and DeepMind release Tree of Thoughts, deliberate problem solving with large language models, an approach that generalizes over the popular chain of thought approach to prompting. In contrast to prior strategies like direct prompting, chain of thought prompting, and self-consistency, Tree of Thoughts explores a search tree to reach solutions. On mathematical reasoning puzzles like Game of 24, this dramatically improves success rates. The authors make their code and prompts available. Meta AI announces the massively multilingual speech project, which aims to scale speech technology to more than a thousand languages. The problem is approached using readings of publicly available religious texts in different languages, together with self-supervised learning. MMS builds pre-trained wav to vec 2.0 models covering 1,406 languages. ASR and speech synthesis models for 1,107 languages, and a language identification model for 4,017 languages, spanning locations around the world. On 54 languages of the Fluors benchmark, MMS significantly outperforms Whisper. The models are made available under a Creative Commons non-commercial license. Next, we have Vision LLM. Large language model is also an open-ended decoder for vision-centric tasks. This work aims to provide a unified perspective for vision and language tasks by treating images as a foreign language. The framework takes in both images and instructions and uses an LLM decoder to output results in the desired format. The method is general but still competitive with specialized models. With a generalist LLM, the authors find that they can achieve 60% MAP on Coco. Next up, Toolkin GPT, augmenting frozen language models with massive tools via tool embeddings. This work notes that using LLMs with external tools is a promising approach to solving complex problems. However, in-context learning only allows for a few shots of demonstrations, limiting performance. To tackle this, Toolkin GPT represents each tool as a token, or Toolkin, which can be learned with an extensive set of demonstration data. These Toolkins are added to the vocabulary so that during inference, when a Toolkin is predicted, the LLM switches into a special mode to execute the tool and injects the outputs back into the generation. On Wikidata question answering, when comparing to in-context learning, Toolkin GPT achieves significantly higher accuracy. Meta releases Megabyte, predicting million-byte sequences with multi-scale transformers. This work proposes a multi-scale decoder architecture that segments sequences into patches and runs a local submodel within patches and a global model between patches. The benefits include subquadratic self-attention, per patch rather than per position feedforward layers, which can be made chunkier as a result, and parallelism in decoding because the patch representations are generated in parallel without waiting for the local submodel. The work represents a demonstration of tokenization-free autoregressive sequence modeling at scale, which is exciting because no one likes tokenization. Next, Salesforce AI Research releases Code T5 Plus, a family of models trained with self-supervised learning on the tasks of span denoising, decoder-only causal language modeling, and seek-to-seek -seek causal language modeling. An instruction-tuned variant achieves strong performance on human eval. Code and models are made available. Towards expert-level medical question answering with large language models from Google builds on their recent Palm 2 model and applies medical domain fine-tuning and an ensemble refinement prompting technique to move significantly beyond the performance of MedPalm on MedQA. The model is found to perform favorably to physicians on 1,000 consumer medical questions. Next, we have Getting VIT in Shape, Scaling Laws for Compute Optimal Design from Google, which finds that small vision models can perform on par with larger ones with the same compute if we optimize their shape. This work produces a Sovit model that achieves 90.3% accuracy with fine-tuning on ImageNet, competitive with much larger models. The author's scaling laws suggest that MLP dimensions should be scaled faster than depth and depth Depth should be scaled faster than width. Next, according to, prompting language models improves quoting from pre-training data. Motivated by the observation that large language models struggle with hallucination, the authors introduce according to prompting, in which they direct large language models to ground responses against previously observed text. For example, by using a prompt like, 
based on evidence from Wikipedia. This is found to increase the direct quotations used in the generated text. Complex claim verification with evidence retrieved in the wild from the University of Texas at Austin proposes a fully automated pipeline to check real-world claims by retrieving raw evidence from the web. Complex claims are decomposed into multiple questions with an LLM. These questions then form one stage of a verification pipeline in which retrieval is used to help judge the veracity of claims. Next up, LM versus LM, detecting factual errors via cross-examination. The key idea here is that an incorrect claim made by a language model is likely to result in an inconsistency. The authors propose a multi-turn interaction between one language model that generates the claim and a second language model that acts as an examiner to produce cross-examination dialogues for assessing factual correctness. This method achieves strong performance against existing prompting strategies. A quick roundup of other news. Anthropic has raised $450 million in Series C funding led by Spark Capital, with participation from Google, Salesforce Ventures, Sound Ventures, and Zoom Ventures. Engadget reports that Microsoft is putting AI in the heart of Windows 11 with a co-pilot tool that works across apps. A report for Labour for the Long Term proposes that the UK invests up to £11 billion in two publicly owned companies, The Great British Cloud and Brit GPT. The author, Hayden Belfield, suggests that the UK should prioritise investments in public cloud and public foundation models, not try to be at the forefront of chip production. Neva has announced that it will be shutting down Neva.com and their consumer search product, noting that acquiring users has been really hard. Technomancer's AI has written a report criticising the EU AI Act and its negative consequences, noting that what the Act seems to mean is that you can open source traditional machine learning models but not generative AI, and commenting that this is a deeply corrupt piece of legislation. Lokesh Chowdhury disagrees, writing that the Draft AI Act does not target the open source ecosystem in general and is more targeted to big tech. Meta announced MTIA their first-generation AI inference accelerator, an ASIC for AI recommendation workloads. They also described some use cases of their research supercluster, which contains 16,000 NVIDIA A100s. TechCrunch reports that Together, a startup featuring Stanford professors Percy Leung and Chris Ray, has raised $20 million to build open-source generative AI models. The Wall Street Journal reports that Apple is restricting employee use of ChatGPT due to concerns about confidential data leaks and is building its own technology in-house. Apple has created a personal voice feature that can sound like you or a loved one in just 15 minutes. Sam Altman encouraged US lawmakers to regulate AI in a recent hearing. The hearing also featured Gary Marcus, who advocated for providing scientists with access to the latest models for improved auditing. On to AI risk. OpenAI have published their perspective on the governance of superintelligence. Noting that given the possibility of existential risk, we can't just be reactive. They suggest we need coordination among the leading development efforts, something like an IAEA for superintelligence efforts, and technical capability to make a superintelligence safe. Next, Yoshua Bengio has written a piece describing how rogue AIs may arise. He defines a potentially rogue AI as an autonomous AI system that could behave in ways that would be catastrophically harmful to a large fraction of humans. The post explores the plausibility of rogue AIs arising even without the intent of their creators, and makes a few observations like, we should definitely avoid designing survival instincts into AI systems. I recommend reading the piece in full. An article in The New Yorker by Matthew Hudson discusses the challenges of stopping runaway AI, and highlights some of the different views on the topic. Commenting on the regulation narrative, Cohere co-founder Aidan Gomez observes that it's pretty extraordinary that we have a literal doomsday cult steering the narrative on tech regulation. Not a figurative doomsday cult, a literal omnipotent entity is coming, it will annihilate us all doomsday cult. On to a roundup of tools. First, we have Adobe releasing Photoshop with Firefly, which can do fancy things with a generative fill tool. It looks pretty slick. Next, we have an open source library called Pandas AI that adds generative AI capabilities to the Pandas data processing library. The final edition of the Vox SRC challenge is running, where the task is speaker recognition in the wild. The evaluation server opens on the 1st of June. Like we're obviously a long way away in some sense, uh, but we're also moving fairly fast and moving faster all the time. 
The Machine Learning Street Talk podcast is an AI podcast that does deep dives on technical topics with researchers and scientists. I recommend the recent discussion with Robert Miles on AI alignment. Stresses and the fears about everything that's being worked on at the moment, it is important to keep in mind that there is a an important North Star that everybody is working towards and we just got to keep focused on those goals rather than sort of be too sidetracked by um, some of the fears. The No Priors podcast conducts interviews that feature discussions with AI engineers, researchers, and founders. In this case, Mustafa Suleiman. Google announces an AI-powered collab with Kodi, which offers features like code generation from text, auto-completion, and chat. Turning to commentary on AI, Fergal Reid asks, why are so many giants of AI getting GPTs so badly wrong? Specifically, Fergal says that some big names in AI, like Jan LeCun, Rodney Brooks, and Noam Chomsky, are seriously underestimating the capabilities of large language models. He provides evidence to show that GPT-4 clearly seems to have a world model. He goes on to say, the underestimating I'm seeing doesn't reassure me about the AI safety debate at all. If so many experts are getting it so wrong today, this isn't encouraging. Martin Goodson has written a post suggesting that the Alan Turing Institute has failed to develop develop modern AI. In particular, it has been at best irrelevant to the development of modern AI in the UK. He observes that the Turing has been completely blindsided by recent breakthroughs. Radical change is needed. Nathan Benach has written in the Financial Times that European governments need to start taking defence innovation seriously. Benach, an investor with Airstreet Capital, notes that Europe's absent track record in defence innovation is striking, adding that democracy won't defend itself with the next grocery delivery app. He identifies a lack of political courage, a reluctance to make choices, and a culture of penny-pinching as factors that plague European innovation. Now, it's time for Samuel's book recommendation. This week, I'm recommending The Art of Doing Science and Engineering, Learning to Learn by Richard Hamming. This book provides many insights gathered over a long career as a leading engineer and scientist. Last, I'll mention a project I am working on called Filter. We're focused on fact-checking AI outputs. If you're interested in finding out more, you can find our Discord link in the video description. Also in the video description, you can find links to the mentioned articles. I hope you have a wonderful day.